up sauce gang and welcome back to the channel hot sauce pizza with a banger food theory reaction and chat this is i think our third one about prime because food theory just dropped is prime in serious trouble food theory now i'm wondering because i know there was some i don't know speculation about forever chemicals and blah 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 stuff like that so I'm stoked to jump into this. I personally love me some Prime, so I'm curious to see what this is about. But before we jump into it, can you show Food Theory some love by subscribing to the channel and share? We're trying to get to a quarter million subs. So if you haven't yet, please smash that subscribe button and join the Sauce Gang family. But enough talking, let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot sauce beats. Woo! Hold up, wait a minute, gotta put some pimping in it. Logan Paul and Prime are back in the news, yet again. This time, being accused of having high levels of chemicals that stay in your body forever and yeah. increase your rate of cancer. Yeah. I wanted to see what the hubbub was all about with these chemicals, and after looking into it, I have to do something I never thought would happen. Stand I up for have Logan to Paul? defend Logan Paul. I know it. Yeah, because uh, uh, I've seen multiple, uh, well, A, Logan made a video on it, but um, in a bunch of the research into these forever chemicals, I mean, Prime, it's not like Logan is making this stuff in his kitchen. Like Prime is heavy regulated, just like Pepsi. And the bottles are made by the same company that makes Pepe, Pepsi or either Coca-Cola bottles. So it's like... Hello, Maybe Internet. Talk Welcome about to it. Food Theory, the show that'll stick with you forever. Speaking of which, Prime is getting sued in a class a action lawsuit theory. for allegedly having unacceptably high levels of polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAs, in their grape flavor. They're saying that the presence of these chemicals makes Prime illegal to sell. As a shock to illegal. absolutely no one, Logan's done a couple of videos in response to the allegations defending yep. his drink. Naturally, I had to roll up my sleeves and dig in to see who's in the right here. I mean, we're no strangers to Logan. Let us know, and, baby. and Prime might not be the best thing to make a cake out of, but straight up illegal. <laughs> and you know what? The more I looked into these chemicals, the more terrifying it got. And let me tell you, the problem goes way beyond Prime. So today, not only am I going to yeah. show you why Logan and his drink might not actually be the problem this time, but why everything else in your kitchen might be. Let's take a look at where oh, this God. whole debacle starts. And I know, starts. I know a lot of this. Uh, uh, I think it's in Teflon. So a lot of these forever chemicals were in like pans, uh, pots, stuff like that. Back in August of 2023, a law firm took the case of a California woman who found high levels of PFAs in the grape flavor of Prime Hydration and decided to submit a class action lawsuit against Prime. For those of you who don't know, a class action lawsuit takes a whole group of people that all have the same issue against the company and makes one giant case instead of hundreds. It strengthens the overall argument and increases their odds of winning. The reason this is important is because they're essentially inviting anyone who's had a grape flavored Prime so they can potentially better their odds unfortunately for me i don't drink prime and red is my favorite flavor anyway so next time i guess essentially what the plaintiff <laughs> is saying is that she would never have bought the primes that she did if they'd accurately marketed the presence of pfas in their drink and therefore caused her and others like her quote physical damage and economic harm regardless of how many she bought the real issue is that these forever chemicals have some serious side effects they can lead to increased cancer risk developmental delays in children or even affect your ability to have children so what the heck are they well pfas were largely introduced to the world in the 1940s with the creation of the non-stick coating Teflon. PFA is sort yeah. of an umbrella term for 12 thousand different chemicals, oh, wow, but they all serve that nonstick purpose. Over the years, with how widespread their application became, studies started to detect increasing levels of these chemicals in people. It took a while before we realized that they build up over time in our bodies, and that's how they got their nickname Forever Chemicals. So while in absolute minuscule amounts they may not do much, the danger happens when you're exposed to them a bunch over time over and they time. don't leave your body. The two that are most widely detected and have been issued advisories for are perfluorooctane sulfonic acid and perfluorooctanoic acid. Jeez! Why can't science names ever be easy? Yeah, like well, bad thingy one like and sort of bad thingy two. They don't even economize well. <laughs> PFOS, PFOA. Anyway, the question with this whole lawsuit is whether PFAs and specifically PFOS are in fact in Prime at toxic levels. The question is, where is the lawsuit claiming the PFAs are in Prime? Well, 
it could really only be in one of two places, the bottle or the liquid. PFAs are common in plastic, so that seems about as good a starting place as any. And it's where Logan starts his defense video. Yep. There's claims that PFOS or forever chemicals come from plastic. So in this case, they're not talking about the actual drink, the liquid prime. They're talking about the bottle that prime is manufactured in. He goes on to say that basically their bottles are made by the same manufacturer that every big drink company uses for their bottles. They all follow the necessary guidelines they need to and adhere to all the up-to-date practices laid out by the Food and Drug Administration or FDA to be safe. This doesn't necessarily mean there aren't PFAs in the plastic though. I mean, these things are everywhere. And I do mean everywhere. Remember when I said they make things non-stick? They also make things resistant to heat, oil, stains, grease, and water. And it's not just popcorn pots and bags. pans that benefit from that. It's our pizza boxes, our popcorn bags, candy wrappers, even our clothes and furniture. And honestly, without them, all of our popcorn would stick to the bags and the grease in our pizzas would make them fall right through the boxes. Even your mattress cover most likely has PFAs in them. Here's the thing though, our bodies only absorb a small amount of PFAs through our skin. So unless you're actively eating your candy wrappers or chewing on your mattress cover <laughs> in your sleep, you shouldn't worry too much about them, which means you can rub a prime bottle all over yourself without any concern if that's like something you do who am i to judge now if there are pfas in the plastic bottle they can seep into the liquid but studies show that plastic bottles are most likely not a significant source of pfas so if that's the case then the liquid is where the majority of the pfas allegedly are according to the lawsuit the woman suing prime conducted independent third-party testing and found numerous ones in the grape flavor the testing claimed to find 0.06 ppt in prime three times as much as drink water. No, that's not shorthand for PowerPoint, that's parts per trillion, <laughs> a measurement of concentration of a substance, meaning how much of something is in one trillion parts of a mixture. 0.06 parts per trillion is so small, it's honestly hard to imagine. To give you an idea, if you were to take a beach the size of a football field, 0.06 parts per trillion would equal roughly one grain of sand. Now, that's not to say that just because it's a tiny amount, it isn't harmless. After all, it is three times the lifetime health advisory for water. And this is something that's been misconstrued quite a bit. The statement in the legal document has been taken as meaning that one bottle of Prime has more PFOS than a lifetime of drinking water. And admittedly, it is super confusing wording, but in reality, it means that it just has three times more than an average liter of water would have. To give you an idea, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, recently updated to the strictest guidelines yet this year. And even then, it considers levels of four parts per trillion or more in water water to be the limit. For those of you keeping track, that's 66 times more than Prime allegedly has. Now, don't get me wrong, oh, wow. Prime's levels are still higher than the recommended safety advisory level, but this detection level is still far below what the government currently deems as enforceable. And I hate to do this, but Logan does also have a point. That's interesting because the EPA says that anything under 1.1 PPT cannot be deemed as reasonably accurate. This is 100% accurate. Oh, wow. Burns! But 1.1 <laughs> ppt is the detection limit for PFOS, meaning what the independent study found isn't within accurate bounds. And as far as the cancer risk, well, the EPA calculates that in water, 0.5 micrograms of PFAs per liter, which, by the way, is a way higher concentration, increases cancer rate by one millionth. According to that, it translates to you having to drink 1,667 bottles of Prime to increase the cancer rate by 0.000. .00 zero one percent so drinking a oh, bottle wow. of prime won't kill you it just tastes like it will now this lawsuit is still I ongoing and as of the writing of this i don't episode, like grapes, there's though. still no word on what the final decision will be but regardless we're in a state of massive change when it comes to pfas in fact prime isn't the only brand that's facing lawsuits for this law firms that specialize in class action lawsuits like this one have been filing against numerous businesses responsible for having pfas show up in their pipeline and the more coverage these things get and the more regulations tighten the more lawsuits we can expect even coca-cola is getting caught up in these in fact the lawsuit against coke's simply orange orange juice makes this prime one look like nothing the plaintiff there claims that the orange juice has levels of pfas that are hundreds of times higher than in water suddenly 0.06 parts per trillion in prime doesn't seem as bad so what does this all mean for you wrap yourself simply up in a giant juice. Don't sterile drink bubble <laughs> and roll around the streets never to touch anything ever again i mean if we've learned anything the bubble wrap would be full of pfas too but luckily the good news Amen is that pfos that. concentration 
levels in the average person are on the decline, mostly because manufacturers aren't being exposed to them nearly as often, partially because there's been limits on them since the early 2000s, and also due to automated processes limiting worker exposure. And there are things you can do. You can look for cookware that is non-PFAs, but notice I said non-PFAs. A S. Some products may toot themselves as being non PFOS, but that just means they're most likely using one of the other 12,000 chemicals. So what you want to look for is carbon Jeez. steel or cast iron for non-toxic, non-stick alternatives. You can also reduce your fast food consumption. PFOS are in the grease resistant packaging. Oh, and like I said, don't microwave popcorn. The PFOS from the bag leak into it. And if all of this seems ridiculous to you because uh. you don't want to give up everyday foods and items like your clothing, don't worry. There's laws all over the world being pushed through to ban the usage of PFAs. In April, right after the hoopla with the Prime lawsuit came out, there was a bill that was introduced that would eliminate all non-essential uses of PFAs, meaning companies oh, yeah. would have to petition the EPA to deem their product essential if they wanted to continue having them. Even in Europe, PFAs have been restricted for over 10 years, and there's a proposal being published for a blanket ban on all PFAs as early as 2026. We're only now truly starting to understand the dangers of PFAs and the levels at which they're dangerous, so big changes aren't going to happen for some time. The point here is that while you should absolutely try and limit your exposure to PFAs, and there are steps that are being taken to reduce them in the products all around us, they are still in products all around us. In insanely ben varying and levels, too, the they're dough. nearly impossible the to dough. avoid. So while Grape Prime may have PFAs in <laughs> not it, the it's likely dough, not more than your orange juice or candy or even your mattress cover. And though I'm absolutely not a lawyer, the science suggests that this time, Logan might be <laughs> Logan might be right. Logan might not be right. right. And at the end of the day, right. while Logan and Prime may not be around forever, it looks like they're definitely here to stay for now. But hey, that's just a theory. A, a food, food theory. theory. Bon appetit. Hey, bon appetit. If you want to check out the time I made a cake out of Prime? Make sure to click the link on the screen now for it. That's one that we haven't seen yet. But let me bring you in chat. Hey, we got ourselves some edumacation. I didn't know a that. Forever chemicals are in that much stuff, dude. I did not know that. Um, God, what's the movie? There's a movie chat about, um, movie about forever chemicals. Uh, I think it won Dark Waters. Oh my God. I think it might've won best picture or it was nominated. True story. Ugh. And it's about them finding out about these forever chemicals and the company that was making Teflon like just hit it. They knew about it. People were dying and there was a city that was just like ah, oh, getting the sewage from it. Anyways, highly rec amazing, amazing, amazing movie. Mark Ruffalo, the guy that played uh, the Hulk um, from the Avengers is in it. Highly recommend it, but I enjoyed reacting to this. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you show Food theory, I was trying to say game theory. Food theory, some love by subscribing to the channel. Chat, we're trying to get to a quarter million subs. So if you haven't yet, please smash that subscribe button and join the Silas Gang family. Enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, it's eat, sleep, and make beats. And usually, coming another. That's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Cuckoo. Got my love for Silas Gang. Peace out, chat. Boom.